A new discovery in Egypt makes it possible to create an incredibly realistic portrayal of a man who existed 30,000 years ago in what is presently Egypt, and it's a mind-boggling insight into the progression of human evolution and how different people looked like back then. Even famous British author and researcher Graham Hancock came out and explained why these ancient people who lived in the territory of Egypt were very different from us, and how they suddenly ceased to exist. And before we look at how this ancient man really looked like, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It will be great support for us. So, back in 1980, archaeologists made an exciting discovery at a place called Nazlir Charta II, an archaeological site located in Egypt's Nile Valley. They dug up the skeletal remains of a man, and upon conducting anthropological examinations, they determined that he was a young adult, aged between 17 and 29 years old at the time of his death. The man was around 160 centimeters tall and had African ancestry. Remarkably, this skeleton represents the oldest known existence of Homo sapiens remains found in Egypt, making it one of the world's oldest discoveries of its kind, as reported in a study. Apart from being buried with a stone axe, not much else was known about him. But now we gained more information about how these people lived, and how different they were from us in the 21st century. After more than four decades, a group of researchers from Brazil has accomplished a remarkable feat. They managed to reconstruct the facial features of the man by utilizing numerous digital images obtained from a thorough examination of his skeletal remains. These remains are currently housed in the renowned Egyptian museum located in Cairo. According to Moricure Elas Santos, an archaeologist from the Ciro Felimion Cardoza Archaeology Museum in Brazil and the first author of the study, the skeleton is mostly intact with some missing elements. These include the ribs, hands, a portion of the right shin bone, the lower part of the left shin bone, and the feet. However, the most crucial component for facial recognition, the skull, was well preserved, as stated in an email to Live Science. The researchers noted a distinctive feature of the skull that caught their attention, the jaw, which displayed notable differences from people in the 21st century. Additionally, there was a section of the skull that was absent. To overcome this challenge, the team employed a technique where they replicated and mirrored the missing portion using the opposite side of the skull. With that, they utilized data points derived from computerized tomography (CT scans) of virtual donors who are currently alive. The skull, in general terms, has a modern structure, but part of it has archaic elements, such as the jaw, which is much more robust than that of modern men, study co-author Sachira Morales, a Brazilian graphics expert, told Life Science in an email. When I observed the skull for the first time, I was impressed with that structure and at the same time curious to know how it would look after approaching the face. Using a technique called photogrammetry, the researchers skillfully combined the digital images, creating two distinct virtual 3D models of the man. The first model depicted him in a black and white image, with his eyes closed and a neutral expression. The second model took a more artistic approach, portraying a youthful man with disheveled dark hair and a well-groomed beard. Moraes explained that there is a common misconception surrounding facial approximation, often influenced by Hollywood movies, where the final outcome is portrayed as an exact replica of the person in real life. However, in reality, the process is not as straightforward. The objective is to create an approximation of what the face could have looked like, based on existing statistical data. The resulting work is a simplified representation, far from a perfect replication. However, it is always important to humanize the individual's face when working with historical characters, since, by complementing the structure with hair and colors, the identification with the public will be greater, arousing interest and, who knows, a desire to study more about the specific subject or archaeology and history as a whole," he added. The researchers hold the hope that presenting a glimpse into the life of this ancient man can contribute to a deeper understanding of the progression of human evolution for archaeologists. The fact that this individual is over 30,000 years old makes it important for understanding human evolution," Santos said. Also, 30,000 years ago, Egypt as we know it today did not exist. The civilization we commonly associate with ancient Egypt emerged around 3000 BCE, roughly 5,000 years ago. During this time, the area was inhabited by hunter-gatherer communities who led a nomadic lifestyle. These early inhabitants relied on hunting game animals fishing, and gathering wild plants for sustenance. 
They lived in small groups and moved frequently in search of food and resources. Their dwellings were likely temporary structures made from natural materials such as wood, branches, animal hides, and leaves. The people of that era used stone tools extensively, including hand axes, scrapers, and blades, which they crafted by shaping stones through a process known as lithic reduction. They used these tools for hunting, cutting, and other daily activities. In terms of social organization, these early communities likely operated in small bands with fluid leadership structures. They likely had a strong reliance on communal cooperation for survival, as resources were scarce and cooperation was necessary for hunting large game and defending against predators. In terms of cultural and artistic expression, evidence suggests that these early inhabitants of the region engaged in cave painting and rock art. Some of these art forms depict animals, human figures, and scenes from everyday life, and there are numerous significant differences between these civilizations and us. People in the 21st century due to the vast changes that have occurred over thousands of years of human history. The people of 30,000 years ago relied solely on stone tools and had limited access to resources, also settlement and agriculture. Today, Egypt is known for its agricultural productivity and settled communities. In contrast, the early inhabitants were nomadic hunter-gatherers who moved from place to place in search of food. In addition, social organization and complexity Modern society is characterized by complex social structures, institutions, and hierarchies. In contrast, Paleolithic communities of 30,000 years ago likely had simpler social structures with less hierarchy and division of labor. Also, it's interesting to point out that Graham Hancock, who is a well-known author and journalist who has written extensively on various topics, including ancient people, alternative history, and archaeological mysteries, he has proposed alternative theories and interpretations that challenge the conventional understanding of ancient Egyptian history. Some of his notable ideas include 1. Ancient Advanced Civilizations Hancock suggests that there may have been highly advanced civilizations that predate the known ancient civilizations, such as Egypt, and that they possessed advanced knowledge and technologies that have been lost to history. According to Graham, there was a giant flood that completely destroyed these ancient civilizations, and because of this, we lost a lot of evidence about these civilizations. 2. Alternative Dating Hancock has proposed that the dating of certain ancient Egyptian monuments, such as the Great Sphinx and Giza pyramids, may be older than traditionally believed, suggesting a more ancient origin for these structures. It's important to emphasize that while Hancock's work has gained popularity, it has also faced criticism from the academic community. The mainstream consensus among Egyptologists and archaeologists is that ancient Egypt developed as a distinct civilization around 3000 BCE, based on the available archaeological and historical evidence. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.